big day today. Today is the 15th still, and uh, we're now leaving the marina. Well, it's, it's, well, I was going to say for the last time, that's possibly a little harsh. I'm sure we'll be back uh, to some marinas or other, but uh, no time soon, I don't think. And that's, at least that's the intention, but we won't be back anytime soon. So we're going to leave the marina and we're going to go around the other side of Maka Island and find, see if we can find ourselves a nice spot there to anchor and uh, say it's not much uh, distance but there's basically no wind, there's a hint of a breeze now, there was no wind earlier, uh, only a hint of a breeze. So we're going to go and uh, uh, see if we can park at uh, Maka Island until there's a bit of a breeze and then we'll move around uh, as we see fit. Everything is supposed to change on the 1st of October, uh, so just over a fortnight from now. Everything is supposed to open up on the 1st of October. Whether it will or not remains to be seen. But anyway, here we go. Shall we, Sandra? Yes. We're going to head off to the open waters to get closer to reality. So, Eventually, well. yeah, this is the uh, this is day one of the adventure, if you like. This is day one when we leave. Here we go. Here we go. Okay, Sandra. When you're ready, if you do the stern line, right. sorry, the, 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 ster the forward line. Yeah. I'm going to put my hand through this loop here. So that I can pull the yacht. Okay, whenever you're ready. Thank you very much. Thank you. And a little push from the guys and a little nudge from the engines. We're away. One, episode 5 we left the IPO Grand Marina where we were living on board for a couple of weeks merely to go and test the boat and its equipment and and we were put to the test all the dramatic details keep watching Good morning everyone and welcome to our first morning, our first wake up at Anchor since we left the marina for good and I have to say it could not be a much better day. It's absolutely glorious. There's barely a hint of a breeze, or not a breeze, a breath of wind. There's hardly a cloud in the sky and the sun is shining. But slightly bizarrely, on this first morning, we are making preparations for me to go back up the mast. Uh, why, you might ask, am I going to go up the mast? Well, the answer is that uh, sharp-eyed Sandra noted when we uh, parked here last night, when we were just sorting things out, that there was something flapping around up to... Oh, chooky birdies. Great. <laughs> There was something flapping around uh, up the mast. And if you look at it, if you can be able to see it just above the spreader and close to the, the main halyard, which is the double one going up, there's a sort of little dingly dangly thing hanging down. And that is the sheath of the uh, jack stay. These, this intricate array of um, cords uh, are to hold the sail bag uh, in position and it looks like the main halyard has been rubbing against the uh, jack stay and taken the cover off it. I cannot uh, replace that just now. I, I don't know how I would go about doing that to be honest. It goes into the mast and comes down the other side and all the rest of it. It's quite a complicated job. So uh, what I'm going to do is go up and put some uh, 
chafing tape. I have some chafing tape which I've used here. If you see this white stuff here, I've put on here because where the uh, um, where this uh, uh, guardrail meets the um, bar bottle screw jack of the, uh, the uh, side stay here uh, chafes against the uh, uh, against each other. So I put some tape on there, and I'm going to go up there and try and put some tape on that. Uh, bit of uh, jack stay before it snaps and hopefully that will see us until the next opportunity we get to replace the jack stays which are a bit tired and in fact I would like to do the whole sail bag uh, and we'll take off the blue and perhaps make it the same colour as the not so bad uh, uh, so on thing and get them to take that off sew it onto the new sail bag and uh, put new jack stays on as well Okay, so that's the first job for today. Okay, so... Good morning! Good morning. Going up the mast is obviously fraught with danger. So, the important thing is to uh, make sure you do it as safely as you possibly can. Uh, um, we were fortunate to park here, anchor here last night. And we seem to be the only people. We have the private ocean to ourselves, just a fishing boat going by. And um, yes, beautiful day in Phuket today. After yesterday's rain, the night before yesterday, it rained all day, all night. So um, yeah, we've been very lucky, mixed up temperatures. And um, that's the hotel on the other side where it's sadly deserted at this time and um, yeah there's a couple of hotels or luxury accommodation and we are sitting right in front of it um, by, all by ourselves all by ourselves okay. sadly. so I have my um, kit bowling, the repair kit my bowling. Uh, organized and I'm just tying on my repair kit which I'm going to stick in this pocket which I have here so let's just pull this a little bit tighter so that's the primary means of getting up the mast being hauled up on this uh, spinnaker uh, which I meant to uh, get on the other side of this other side of the dawn. Nearly, nearly, nearly almost. Yes! Bravo! Okay. Um, there's a couple of threads up there and John's going to repair yeah. them. Right John? Yeah, we've been, been through this. Okay. I'm also going to attach myself with this as a safety line to the main halyard. But it's up there so Sandra's going to have to winch me up a bit before we go.
Hi guys, John seems to be professional going up the mask. He goes up once again. We detected some um, irregularity with the sails, trying to get them down. So he's going to investigate. Is that correct, John? Yes. It's rather, rather annoying not to put too fine a point on it. But there we go. I cannot see why the mainsail won't come down. It's stuck about three quarters of the way up, which is not ideal. And because I normally use the mainsail halyard as the safety rope, I can't use that either, which is equally annoying. But I can't see any other way around it. So, onwards and upwards. Okay, good luck, Captain. Here we go. and sort it out. It turned out to be a protruding screw head that was catching the cars of the mainsail and uh, of course I went up the first time and didn't have the right tools with me. I had to come back down, get the right tools, go back up again and get it fixed. And now we have the mainsail down. And we're parked in this little anchorage. Um, it says to some water so we'll be gone by the time uh, the tide goes out again. This island here is Koh Rang Noi, the small rang, uh, is a private island. Not bad, eh, for a private island. I assumed when it was a private island it was it meant it was a private house, but actually it looks like a hotel or something like that. Very posh though. Anyway, glorious day. Uh, feeling a little bit stressed out for looking up the bus three times in one day. That makes it four total, which is ridiculous. But I have to say, I'm very glad I bought my boss's chair. Uh, it was 
quite a lot of money for that one with the board that you sit on and all the rest of it but it does make it very comfortable and very make you feel very secure so i'm glad i spent the money and we will spend the night here gently bobbing at anchor hopefully it's as peaceful as last night which was absolutely fantastic okay so good morning everybody welcome to morning two uh, our second uh, night not quite as restful as our first night. Uh, I had set an anchor alarm and the damn thing went off twice in the night. As far as I can see, uh, we hadn't moved an inch, which was slightly annoying. Uh, but maybe I just need to increase the parameters that allows me to move before the alarm goes off. Uh, but it's a work in progress. Anyway, the noise you can hear is the generator running. We're making both electricity and water. Um, we. Uh, ran the batteries down to 71% uh, overnight and uh, although we'll get some from the solar today it won't be enough, it won't be 30% so we're just uh, using the opportunity while we're sitting here quietly at anchor to uh, charge up the batteries and also uh, fill up the water tank we've been using meanwhile the Commodore is busy making breakfast yes some fresh fruit while they're still good to eat. It's a good idea. Best way to start the day, right? Yeah, nice fresh Got fruit. some lovely fresh papaya, sweet as honey. And that's what I'm We gonna bought choose. those uh, from a, a nice little lady at the side of the road uh, that we used several times uh, when we were uh, living on the yacht um, before we uh, set sail. I wish we could bring some home, but. Yeah. <laughs> this is chef's portion. <laughs> Excellent. Good morning from beautiful free ocean, ocean free. And John is in the water, the water baby's in the water. How's it going? lovely the water is the water babies in the water and scary mary sandra sitting on the on the boat <laughs> we'll we'll swim later when we get to the island that was the agreement somebody's got to keep a watch you know we started off from a small little island and now we're trying to buy time for some wind so we stopped in the middle of the ocean. So John is having a little bit of a nice swim. And um, then we'll see how it goes. Water looks beautiful. And that's where we departed from a few minutes ago. And we're heading to Rachanoi to stay over for the weekend. Okay. Okay, let me show you another view with our sails up. Sails up. Yeah. Full on, big time, full on. Full on. Waiting for the wind to be a little bit more generous so that we can actually sail. The sail doesn't give doesn't give me a smack in the face yet. Better run, better run, yeah. Captain Lady 
thing off. He doesn't want to get out the water now. That's good today while we head off. Give us a wave, Captain. Bye, I'm leaving you here. That's impossible. <laughs> See you later, guys. Bye. Hi, everybody. It's Saturday afternoon here in Ratchanoi. Um, we've been. Sorry, I was just rectified by the captain, Racha Yai. We've been here about three weeks ago and it's quite a nice spot and we just come to hang out and as you can see there's lots of yachts there. We've met a couple of guys here before. The gentleman of this big yacht in the front, he's, he's living in Chalong which is not too far away from here. He brings his four dogs here for a couple of days. And they run on the beach on the far end. You can see the beach. He brings them. That's his dinky there, the grey dinky. And he brings them and he takes them across for their daily run. And yes, and the others are just visitors that are us. There's also, there are also day, day boats coming in for snorkeling and diving and um, lunches and then they, they go off before the end of the evening but we will be staying over here tonight there's a fancy little fishing boat beside us quite quite authentic um yes he's parked out there um yeah we've changed our our rules on how we catch the boy the b u o y which is stabilizing us and um, yes, we tried a new method today. Instead of from the front of the boat, we took it from the side and Sandra ran it through. So, as for the instructions for the captain, oh, Captain Peter, he's cleaning his yacht. He's Somebody good. has to do the work. The cabin boy does nothing. Cabin boy, we fired. <laughs> we fired the cabin boy. Now I'm just stuck with the pilot. You know? The winch wench. The winch wench. But that's life, eh? Um, a little bit of fun and a little bit of... Oh, shit, but I nearly fell down now. Oh, my goodness gracious me. Apologies there. Um, yeah, I'm going to try and get down in the water with the, just to check if the work is in the standard. Oh, Captain, how are we doing? Just doing some scraping off the boat there. It's difficult because you keep getting washed away. Uh, That's we we did a couple of rounds um, around the yacht. Um, oh, there's, a, there's a boat coming, in, so we're gonna rock in a minute. So I normally run away when it happens. But John is very very strong and powerful. You know. he, he doesn't take nonsense. He just takes the beating. Oh no, they've gone off the other way. Well, we we parked for the night. It seems like um, a highway in New York because this is where all the boats are passing through. So we're going to probably have a bit of a ripple sleep tonight, but that's okay. Hey, John? Yeah. We're okay. a pretty good boy, so... Yeah. And if you forgot where we are and who's talking, it's the crew from Not So Bad. And Whoop. Captain, over and out. Bye-bye. Bye. Good morning guys, but if rain, sun is nowhere to be seen, um, we've put the sails out, John, Super John has put the sails out, it's raining, not crazy, and guess what, we're going 12 knots, uh, we're at 12 wind speed, and then the speed is there. And again, six, between six and seven and eight knots. Just a nice sailing Monday morning. Grey Monday morning. Sails out, Kenny's out, main sails out. So we'll see what the day holds. Huh, John? Everything looks better with a nice cup of tea. Excellent.
itself makes a hell of a racket. Flapping around like that, I can't help thinking it's going to shake itself to death shortly. See how long it lasts. And we've got a win. Going along nicely still. Nice. Six knots ish. Just recently shaking out the uh, reef and the jenny. Still got the reef in the, the mainsail. I do with a bit of tidying up there, but I don't want to be wandering around up there on deck. Sandra will be having a panic attack. So, leave it as it is. At the Uh, three or four days and as a result we're uh, we're at work um when we were sailing back from uh rancha yai the other day i noticed that part of the uh, uh uv strip this red stuff is uh, is uv covering it's meant to protect the sail from uh, uv damage when it's rolled up <coughs> all you can see is the red bit uh and it was coming off so we've got the sail down, Sandra's doing a bit there, I'm doing this bit along here currently and then I'm going to work down here so we've got a fair bit of stitching to go. I'm quite proud of my stitching, uh, although I don't think it's going to win any prizes in the uh, school uh, needlework uh, competition but nonetheless I'm quite proud of it. And you can see a lot of the st stitching is deteriorating, so work to do, work to do. Right Sandra? Yep. Keep the stitching going. <laughs> I don't think she's going to win any prizes either looking at that. 
Anyway. Guys, have you ever need, have you ever done needlework with such a long needle? Yes. Well, let me. I cannot even get look at look at it. Look at it. It's danger. It's a dangerous yes. weapon. We have to watch each other's eyes because if he he pokes me in the eye or I poke him in the eye, we're both in trouble. So it's quite a careful job. And uh, pay attention. If we ever cut each other accidentally, something or somebody cuts themselves accidentally, this is what we have for uh, sewing up. So it's a pretty large incentive not to uh, get yourself <laughs> cut. <laughs> cut yourself. I'll fix you up with your own, with <laughs> your own equipment. You will, yeah. Yeah. You can just go to the kitchen and start taking out my chopping knife. <laughs> right, back to work. Hey guys, it was uh, just about 10 to 10 when I took that earlier video. It's now 20 past 5 and we've been at this basically without stopping. Now, uh, this is the bit Sandra did from about here uh, up to about here. Now here, I think, here. And then this is the bit I did. I started with this middle section here. And then I went on to this section, which I'm not so proud of. But I thought I was just reinforcing it until I discovered that all this stuff just came off. So that wasn't maybe the best uh, bit of stitching I did. But nonetheless, I then came down and I did all this stuff down here, which I'm quite proud of. Did a little, uh, lose the zigzag when I joined Sandra here she completely lost the zigzag and uh, I don't think she's going to win any prizes in the school uh, needlework competition either but leave your comments below uh, who do you think is the best stitcher on the yacht but anyway that's it not so bad okay so today we've been to the shops for the first time. In fact, it's the first time we've been off the yacht in 10 days. It's the 25th today, the first time. So we've been shopping for the first time. Got a few bits and bobs. I've got a pole there, which I'm hoping we'll be able to use to jam the door. And our little dinghies had a little outing for the first time in 10 days. Yeah, and we're unpacking the fresh veggies. Is nice and another plant pot to try and do some more uh, vegetables. Hi, everybody, it's uh, half past four, quarter to five, it's nearly the cocktail hour uh, on uh, Monday, Tuesday, uh, Tuesday, the 28th of September. September. And we believe that we have cause for celebration. Uh, when we had the solar panels fitted, I was very uh, happy because we had all this solar. I had wanted, as you know, to get more solar, but we had lots of solar. However, I, after the initial sort of euphoria, I began to realise that we weren't getting nearly as much as I had hoped. And uh, I complained to Octopus that we weren't getting nearly enough uh, solar. And they said, well, you know, you never get 100%. You never get 100%. I said, I know I don't, we don't get 100%, but we don't get 50%. We barely get 50% on a good day. And uh, they said, oh, well, we'll have a look at it, but uh, we need more figures. They can tap into uh, my uh, installation from their office uh, so they can monitor it from there. Uh, and... Um, they said we need to look at more figures and I said well you know look at it so then they asked me to run a test where I covered each of the panels individually that didn't prove anything apparently and then I was asked to cover the panels in pairs and Sandra and I did that the other day we needed a nice sunny day and also not too much wind so that we could keep these blankets in place while we took a quick check on the output of the panels I should say that the two panels, there's, uh, the, there's four panels and they're arranged in two pairs. Each pair is in series, sorry, yes, in series, and then the two pairs are in parallel. And what we did was we covered up uh, the pairs in turn and we discovered that one of the pairs wasn't producing any power worth talking about. It said two watts, I think it said, but nothing worth talking about. So I reported this to Octopus and uh, they said they'd send some people there. It's taken a few days for them to do that, uh, but they were here all afternoon. And they took a long time uh, wandering around the system trying to find out what was wrong. And eventually they took down 
one of the speakers in the ceiling, which gives access to the panel, uh, to the void space behind. And uh, behind this uh, uh, speaker, they found miles of cable. And they pulled this cable out, pulled it out, pulled it out, pulled it out, and lo and behold, it wasn't connected to anything. It was just a random 30 metres of cable or so. So, it turns out that the two panels on the starboard side, the one directly behind the cockpit station and the one to the left of it, have not been connected to anything and are therefore not been producing any power at all. Now, hopefully, uh, we're going to get twice as much power as we have been getting. In the meantime, Sandra wants me to get compensation, don't you, Sandra? Yeah, what do you think? You guys give us your view, but I think if you yeah. purchase something, you should get what you purchase. If you if you order a car, you get it with the four wheels and not wait until there's one wheel that is gone and then you have to tell the uh, service provider, I've only got three wheels. And uh, That's being a bit crazy, right? But uh, to cut a long story short, for a job as, as serious as this, um, we're a bit um, disappointed in the results. But... Um, John has been adamant that there was something irregular, which was he was absolutely correct today. We were proven right that we were not getting the maximum output, which the solar panels were actually supposed to produce. So, yes, pat on the back for John Mooner. Very good, well done, because I would not have been able to detect it. I think he's the jack of all trades, and when you sell him something, he's going to look to the fine with the fine tooth comb to ensure that uh, we sell and we're getting maximum output, right? Yes. Uh, with it not having as much solar, partly because it's been cloudy, but partly because we've only had two panels connected, uh, we've had to run the generator pretty much every day, every, certainly every other day. Uh, and, uh, of course, that uh, has a, 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 a impinges on the fuel consumption and so on. And if we had to do that uh, on all our long voyages, it would make a big difference to us. So I'm very happy, uh, although we do have to check that it's working uh, as advertised. And uh, we're, we need a nice, bright, sunny day. Hopefully it will be tomorrow. Uh, it's been a bit rainy on and off today. Um, but uh, hopefully we'll get a nice, uh, sunny day in the next couple of days. And we can check the actual output. So there we go, guys. Always check, check, triple check, double check. The best thing to do. Uh, well, and if you stop, just get John to come and check it. <laughs> I was going to say, hence the uh, shakedown cruises. That's what it's all about, making sure that everything works as advertised. And now that the solar uh, is, you know, touch wood, cross fingers, whatever, um, uh, fixed, uh, we can now get closer to departing because I was adamant that we couldn't depart until we had the solar uh, sorted to our satisfaction. So we'll catch up next time. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye, Bye. Time to go and celebrate. It must be the cocktail hour. Cocktail hour was not so bad. <laughs>
10 p.m. that evening, the wind strengthened, and I became concerned that our mooring was no longer holding us. It was very dark and raining, but the chart plotter confirmed that we were adrift. I alerted Sandra and started the engines, but as we were drifting clear of the island, we had some time to think. The obvious uh, course of action uh, was to return to the anchorage and pick up another boy. It was blowing about 25 knots in the anchorage, but outside in the sea, it was blowing about 35 knots and it were pretty large waves as well. So we decided to release our useless boy and motor around and try and pick up another one, uh, which was not going to be easy in the pitch black. It was really, really dark by this stage. So uh, I crawled out the front and uh, uh, detached the boy from our warps, uh, stowed our warps and then returned uh, to the helm station where Sandra was holding fort. We then decided, as I say, to motor uh, round and pick up another uh, boy. But as soon as we put the engines in forward, the port one stopped and uh, I suspected a fouled propeller. I thought I had an, allowed enough time for the boy to drift uh, clear of us uh, and it seemed to be quite heavy. I thought it was going to sink to the bottom, but apparently not. That then made it much more difficult. Uh, motoring on one engine uh, in a catamaran is quite tricky or, or manoeuvring on one engine is quite tricky. And with limited visibility and things like that, uh, the option to return to the uh, anchorage uh, seemed uh, not to be a great one. So we then decided to think further and we allowed the yacht to drift further out to sea um, <coughs> while we considered our options which were not great at the time. Steering seemed a little bit uh, wishy-washy not to put too fine a point on it. And uh, we were beyond to pretty mountainous waves, although to be honest, we couldn't really see them. We only saw the odd uh, breaking one coming over the top. Uh, but generally speaking, we saw nothing at all, apart from uh, the vigorous rocking and rolling of the yacht. After uh, some time, uh, uh, I decided that we, we would apply more power to the starboard engine which was running fine and try and make mo take more control over the direction we were pointing. This was a bit of a, a, a difficult decision because I was concerned that we might pick up more of the mooring line on the other engine and then we would really be up Shoot Creek without the pedal. However, uh, that proved not to be the case. We were able to control the yacht more uh, using the starboard engine and I uh, pointed her into the waves uh, where the, uh, the motion was much more comfortable. And we then motored all night to uh, I Yon, which is on the south end of Phuket, at a very slow speed uh, because I didn't want to arrive there uh, in the dark, I wanted to arrive there at uh, first light, and that's what we did. Well, the situation is more or less under control now. Still, got some issues. Both engines out of action. Something wrapped around the propeller, I think. But uh, we're uh, in reasonable shape. The wind has died down a lot. It's now only about uh, 10 to 15 knots, I think. It was 35 earlier on. And uh, uh, waves are pretty mountainous. It was completely pitch black. Now there's a hint of light from uh, Phuket. It's only two. seas have died down, they've become very confused and squirrely and really, really uncomfortable. 